This screencast video is from my SAS 150AB class and it's a review of some material that's going to be on the second test. Specifically what I want to talk about in this example is a bubble sort in arrays. So if I could just have you look at this uh, listing real quick, um, what I'm going to do is just talk about what's in here for starters. I, I would first like to identify the array and the array is a collection of items. In this case it happens to be state initials. You can either choose to declare it as character, text, or string. Again, this is pseudocode, so it's unstructured. Pretty much anything goes as long as it's clearly defined. I might make one change here and make that more of a um, comment as opposed to a command. Uh, what this is doing up top here is just like all of our programs have done in the past. It's simply defining those declared variables, in this case also an array, that we're going to use for this program. What I want to do is take this particular list of state initials which are stored in an array and again you can think of an array as being bookshelves shelf 0, shelf 1, shelf 2, 3, and 4 those being the subscripts of this five element array and then down below here what I've done is I've got uh, two loops uh, an outside loop and an inside loop this is necessary to get the <coughs> excuse me array in sorted order this is called a bubble sort because it has the effect of bubbling the correct values in the correct order as it makes its loops. Since there are two loops, it hits this first loop and again uh, with a bubble sort, the number of times it loops will always be one less than the array. You can see that calculation made there. So this will make one, two, three, four, four loops and what it will do is inside each one of those outer loops it will also spin four times. And by going through um, that what amounts to four times four, I guess, um, times, it can get any um, sequence of states here in sorted order. And this could work with virtually anything. You can actually sort numbers, you can sort um, letters, you could sort arrays if you wanted. You could have an array of arrays. A little complicated, we won't talk about that one at all. Um, if you look here, I've tried to name the variables that correspond to approximately what the program does, inner count, outer count, or excuse me, inner count, yeah, and outer count. And then also down here, there's a very important piece, which is the swap um, logic. And basically what needs to happen here is as the array compares one element to the next, if they need to be swapped temporarily, a variable has to be saved before the swap takes place. If it doesn't, then the swap value will overwrite the original value, and now you have two of the same values you've lost the ability to sort your array. Um, this is pretty well explained, I thought, in the book, and we also talked about this in class. If you'll notice, wherever we have these squared off brackets, um, this is where we're going to slip a subscript uh, or index, and that would reference the actual position in the array, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. There are no modules in this particular example, but there very easily could have been. I could have actually created a module that had the sort logic. I could have also created another module down here, which simply takes the array after it's been sorted and then prints out the values. So this could have actually had three or four modules if I decided to put them in there. Uh, there won't be anything this complicated on your test, but you will be expected to understand how to declare an array, how to reference an array, how to assign a value to array, in other words, how to use that swap or put a new value in there. You should know what the advantages of arrays are. Um, again, there's not going to be anything as sophisticated as a bubble sort. I really don't anticipate mixing a module in there, but you should also understand that a module would not be difficult to accommodate in this particular array. Um, if you have questions, uh, send them along via email. Do not use Canvas email. Use regular email because I can get that a lot quicker. And um, you do not have class on Tuesday, but you do have your test on Thursday. There will be someone there to proctor the exam, which will be in campus. Uh, good luck, everyone. Bye.